How's it going? I am unbelievably excited for Metaphor to be coming out. And so I had to get back on YouTube to start streaming again. I was trying out Twitch for a little bit and it yeah, it, it was fine. I, I prefer it much more here on YouTube. But first off, how's everyone doing? And second off, um, we are going to be talking all about this Atlas exclusive showcase because it's been way too long, way too long since we have gotten any metaphor news whatsoever. Um, and so I am going to just dive straight into it. Um, I have created a bingo card, right? Um, so that we can use this kind of structure to create like a bingo card to see what predictions come through, what predictions are less than likely, right? Um, and kind of go from there. And so uh, the point of this stream is not only to share my opinions, but I want to hear all of your opinions so that we can start kind of putting this bingo card together um, to see what we are thinking will happen, what is a long shot, all of that stuff. Um, and then if you want this bingo card, uh, I actually posted it on Twitter um, and I'll be posting it to the Thought Bubble Discord server and I'll probably the Metaphor subreddit too. Um, <laughs> release date is free space. I, you know what, Beowulf? I think you are probably right. I think that that's a pretty much a guarantee. Um, and so I have just a free space. I have the moon in the free space uh, because I feel like we are going to get something for the moon <laughs> specifically. Um, I think that something that is surefire, right? And I am even just going to go on here. I'm going to add release date as one of our things, uh, because I think we need a mix, you know, with any, with any bingo sheet we need, um, we need some things that are surefire, some things that are less likely, you know, whatever. Um, but yes, no, I think, I think you're right that the release date is pretty much all but guaranteed. And I think that that release date, just based on their past releases, right? Um, so a lot of their big titles, since we know we're getting it in fall, right? Um, a lot of their big titles, like the Personas and, and all that, um, is going to be either like last week in October or second week in November to hit that holiday season like just right. I'm thinking based on the game, I think it's going to be last week October, like right around Halloween time. You know, it, capitalize on that fantasy element of it. Um, you know, pair it kind of, kind of around that Halloween time. I don't think that'll be like why, um, but I think, I think it's going to be late October. Um, one thing I hope they would do is d day one DLC. I mean, it, it's Atlas. Uh, I feel, I feel a bit confident that they will d do some sort of day one DLC. Like a, um, like a Gecko Con skin, you know, um, DLC or like a Phantom Thief DLC so that you can dress up the characters so that the protagonist will look like, you know, Makoto from uh, Persona 3 and, like, Hulkenberg might have, like, a Sumirei skin or... Oh, that would be strange, actually. Um, but no. So, release date for sure going on there. Something else that I feel very strongly that we are going to get is... I genuinely believe that in this, um, we are going to get more information on 
like the prince's situation i don't think we'll get a lot of details but we know that the protagonist and the prince of the <laughs> now deceased king um they're friends and that the king or the prince i should say is cursed somehow it, by some circumstance and so he's incapacitated but the peoples of the united kingdom of ukronia believe him to be dead right you know like first the pr i think in one of the trailers there's some like flavor text um that says like first the prince now the king you know and so the prince is obviously going to be a big narrative drive for the protagonist and i think that in this showcase or maybe i just hope um that we get something not a lot but something about the prince um so i'm gonna write prince curse info and so also while we're going along if you have anything um that you feel very strongly about drop it in the chat um and we can kind of go from there how's it going scruff and mcguffin um but yeah so i feel very strongly that we're going to get something in way of that because this is a longer presentation this is by far the most metaphor info that we have gotten up to this point and so obviously we're gonna get some gameplay stuff uh i think that they've confirmed that so you know we'll we'll get stuff with the combat we're gonna get stuff with um and with the combat i hope i hope obviously they'll show off like how the turn-based system works and how it like differs from like past hashino games um but uh I want to see more in depth if the the action elements of the combat are actually in depth in any kind of meaningful capacity um or if they are just kind of uh, a leveled up version of acting as like morgana in the you know as the cat bus in mementos where you just ram through stuff that's like low level so that you can take it out a lot quicker um or like a leveled up version of hitting stuff in tartarus from persona 3 which i'm kind of worried that it is i think it'll be good for fodder enemies but there's unless you do turn base there's no way to actually approach like actual boss fights with it um which i would like more flexibility and i would be pleasantly surprised um if that is what they end up giving us but for right now i think that we'll see the gameplay we'll understand after two days from now how the the combat actually kind of will operate throughout the course of the game if it is primarily turn-based i'll be fine with that i love turn-based battle systems from the persona games um and even i, I enjoy soul hackers not that uh, i like the combat <laughs> in soul hackers um but the i would prefer to have like the ability to like switch back and forth between like a tales of arise style like combat system and you know the persona um since that's something that they highlighted straight off the bat and so i'm going to i'm gonna kind of like shotgun where i put these so combat updates easy enough but so the all everything we've kind of talked about up to this point is pretty easy kind of gimme stuff easy gimme stuff something something that i'm curious about and i think that they might give us actually it's kind of a long shot but i hope they give it to us um 
is a more in-depth look at the homos you know the the monsters that are uh inspired by hieronymus bosch the artist right um the beautiful creatures that they are uh i want to see more <laughs> i want to see just how much of uh an abomination that i think that they could be um and i don't want any story context no story context regarding them i want that to be saved for the main game itself i don't want to know too much going into metaphor i do want to see at least one or two more in this in this battle or um in this uh showcase i guess um because let me see if i can pull it up hold on there is one there's one thing from a hieronymus bosch painting that i think is so i think it would be so cool to fight and so cool to see in this demo or in this game in general that let's see hieronymus bosch let's see images and i'll just switch over to this okay so like hieronymus bosch this thing this thing right here i think that it would be so cool if we could see this or like something from this painting in in the game like it is abhorrent looking or or this thing i think both are like solid possibilities just based on what we've seen so far and there's so much opportunity with Bosch and his artwork to create some really unsettling um but cool enemies in this game and since they've already started kind of leaning into it I think going to these more you know uh even past you know what we've already seen with you know like we know that this is an enemy in the game like we know that but are we gonna see these like ear things coming through i don't know but these are the the this is the one that i'm really kind of interested in seeing as an enemy in the game just because with the I don't know what the status effects and like all of that would look like but i think it would be really cool if this was like a status effect based kind of enemy um where like the like the water coming from the pool underneath the face um like each of the different people could like cause a different status effect i don't know um but with the designs being so strange and so varied i think that they could create thematic and like um thematic boss fights that lean into the designs of each of them to create a different challenge anytime you kind of like encountered a homos uh which i don't think will be one of the primary antagonists of the game by any like stretch of the imagination um i think that it's going to be kind of a um a red herring like they'll be posed as like the big threat you know the titans of attack on titan um but the bigger threat is going to be like the people in power and the government and all that stuff i've talked about in videos before oh my god this year i would argue this year has almost been like too good uh for jrpgs um, and RPGs in general. Like, I fully agree. Um, I have sunk more time into Final Fantasy VII Rebirth than I am proud of. <laughs> um, and, and before that, you know, Persona 3 Reload. Um, I wasn't super into Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, but um i know lots of people were incredible year and we're still in the front half um
And I think that it pro saying that I that you hope it lives up to my excitement for it. I maybe I'm naive. Uh, I think it. I think it will. I think with the team behind Personas three, four, five on it, they are pulling out all the stops with um, the concept artist for Near and the the machine designer being the dude who did everything with Evangelion. Um, I and the fact that I think I read somewhere that this is the project that they have invested the most resources into ever from the studio um i think it will i think it's gonna i think it's flying under the radar for a lot of people understandably so it's a new ip um it looks you know it looks persona-esque but it not enough for the the persona folks to like dive into it immediately and we just don't know that much well we know a lot but just based on the face value of the trailers, we don't know that much. Um, but I think it is going to live up to expectations. Um, for sure. Um, new homos design. I'm going to pop that down here. And then we'll center that. Perfect. Cool. I Yakuza is one of those series that I think I would genuinely really enjoy uh but I don't want to get into it <laughs> because I know how much of a time suck it would be on my life like and it would be a positive one don't get me wrong um but it would be a massive time suck for me and I am in such a a Final Fantasy binge right now like an unadulterated Final Fantasy binge I because all I've played this year really is uh Persona the Persona 5 Tactica DLC Persona 3 Reload which I still need to beat um and then you know Final Fantasy 4, Final Fantasy 14, Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth. I'm working on Final Fantasy 5 right now. Uh, Ali is playing Final Fantasy 7, the original, and she's about to beat it. And I just bought Dirge of Cerberus so that we can finish out the Final Fantasy 7 saga together. Um, yeah, it... But looping back to it, it has been an insane year um for jrpgs and just rpgs in general uh and i think it's only going to get better as time well better is a strong word i think they will maintain momentum like moving into the into the rest of the year um Maybe, maybe it's just because I'm really excited for Metaphor. But, y you know, w that is what it is. Um, so I'm curious, while we're on the topic, um, and I'll keep going with the, the Metaphor Showcase bingo card, obviously, but what has the best game for you all been so far this year? It hasn't been like the, the reloads and the rebirths or the relinks or the hype for the re fantasios um or has it been something else uh because there has been like um i have a co-worker um uh who has been obsessed with princess peach showtime <laughs> and it's a game that i think looks really good too um you know like it's just fun like a, a fun mario world game but um there's just been a lot of weirdly quality titles rebirth have you beaten it uh i'm right now like going for not platinum but getting all of the trophies in the trophy area if you're familiar um but you know rebirth has been huge for me too and let's see here let me duplicate this all right. P 
Persona 3 Reload has lived up to and exceeded... I'm new to Persona 3, right? Uh, well, asterisk. I played Persona 3 to... I got a lot farther than I realized um, when I was making this big deal about it being my first time playing Persona 3 on stream last year. Um, I realized I got very far in 8th grade. I got to the Hanged Man boss fight which is like i was right there um but i digress um but reload has cemented persona 3 i like it differently than persona 5 i can i i flip back and forth which one i like more but it is right there with persona 5 royal um and then turn it boy robs a bank i haven't played that but it sounds sick uh it, if i had to take a is it like a platformer kind of game um and really quick because it popped into my head and i want to get it down on the bingo card before i lose it um i really i truly believe i truly believe that we are going to after monday have official um uh like character portraits and like artwork for the two party members that we know we will have uh juna and the the other girl uh with the three eyes her name is escaping me right now um i think that we're gonna get artwork for them here's why i think that here's why i think that so let me, I'm going to flip back and forth to another window really quickly. Um, RPD, RPG .jp. So if we go over here, right? Oh, we go to this website. I'm going to switch it to English just because I absolutely can't read Japanese in any way, shape, or form, which is fine. Um, if we go down here, we go through, you know, story, United Kingdom of Ukronia, whatever. So in this image, right, where they have, like, all of the characters, and, you know, if you scroll down, like, you get all of the context surrounding the different, you know, whatever. Um, I think that there is enough white space that this image is going to continue expanding with the rest of the party. So I think that, like, Juna could go over here, and and the girl with the three eyes whose name has fully escaped me in this moment will go over here. And maybe, like, the old man who we see in our party um, might also be, like, in this, like, collage of character portraits. But I totally think we are going to get more official character artwork for, like, party members after after Monday. Uh, and it will update on the website because I don't think this collage being the way it is has always been here. I'd have to look back at like previous versions of the website from like my videos or other people's videos. Um, I know Chris Kohler has great videos on on metaphor. Um, but since it's newer looking, I think that's why so that they can picture the whole party kind of like together. Um, Yufa, thank you. Yes, Yufa. Um, oh, I could, yeah, I could totally see the pilot for the vehicle be in there too. Um, which, I don't know, just being able to see everyone together. Um, and with the strength of all of the designs, I think that that'll just, I think one of the things that I really liked about Persona 5 is they were very transparent with like what the party is gonna look like and having that like promise of like a really strong well-designed party at least for me is something that gets me really into like a jrpg like the party makes or breaks it for me um you know there are some exceptions like um final fantasy 16 doesn't have like the most crazy you know like party system um it's more like a 
companion system, if anything. Um, that was going awesome, Goku. Um, but yeah, having Juna and Yufa on here, and like maybe like um, the the old man that we see in the mines, and like the the um, the Gauntlet Runner pilot, for sure. So, going back over to the bingo sheet, uh, let's do this, duplicate it, and I'll just say, like, character designs. And for anyone who's joined late, um, if you follow me on Twitter, uh, which link to that is in the description of the video, um, I have on Twitter this exact template so that if you want to make your own bingo card, please do, um, because I want to see what everyone's kind of opinions are and, you know, see if anyone gets bingo and all that after the showcase. And I will be live streaming the showcase, like, as it's happening. So if that's something that you're interested in, let's, let's hang out. Let's watch it together. Um, I'm going to be freaking out throughout the entirety of the thing. Um, oh, in, Implaceable, you are totally right. I think that even this, the party that is there now is, it has already sold me. Um, I think that Hulkenberg and Straw, like they are um, so dynamic looking i'm actually gonna switch back um over here and then i really i i want to know more about heisme <laughs> um because i know that he comes from the yugif train uh yugif tribe i should say and because they are a tribe that's discriminated against just like the elder tribe of the protagonist I think that that's going to create like a very specific connection between him and the protagonist that could be that I think could be pretty emotionally resonant. Um and so that's maybe where their connection will lie because you know Hulkenberg comes from the Kingsguard is a member of the Rosant tribe. Like they tend to be pretty high up. Stroll is the the tribe that's known for like being in charge of things and full of nobles and all that. So they aren't going to be two that are used to being discriminated against. You know, maybe if they're campaigning with with us, then maybe they will be. But like, that's not going to be, they don't come from that, I imagine, right? Um, whereas I think Heisme, I'm really excited to see how he and the protagonist kind of in, engage with each other and interact, both coming from kind of, he's probably higher up, right? Um, because he's at least one of the eight tribes. Um, but he still won't get the same respect as like, um, as like Hulkenberg or like Stroll, just by nature of what tribe he comes from which I am really excited to see those dynamics in the game. Oh, yes. The the Yugif, uh, the yellow Yugif seems delightful. And because they seem delightful, unfortunately, I think something bad will <laughs> happen to them. Um, and... I think, yeah, like, Shadow, I think you have loads of time to, to like, uh, see lots of stuff about the game. I, I think it'll be massive, though. I think this will be a multi-re, like, a multiple replay kind of game. Um, I think it's going to be bigger than, like, Persona 5 Royal or Persona 3 Reload, like, far and away. Uh, and I think that the side content, I hope... If they do really lean into this fantasy RPG nature of it, um, I think that the side content is going to be strong. Besides, like, the social links or the, the campaign route links or whatever. Um, no, yeah, I know. I 
I don't want it to happen either. I don't want anything to happen to the yellow um, Yugi, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, I'm sure, you know what? Maybe they'll be fine. Maybe they'll be fine. Um, okay, cool. So we're cruising along. So we've got release date, Prince Curse info, um, new homeless design. I want to, I'm going to loop back. I mentioned this a little bit with the, the free space. Um, I jokingly said that the free space was about this, but it's not. I lied. I, I'm being untruthful. Uh, what I genuinely want to see is how the moon affects gameplay. How's it going, Jojo? Um, uh, I don't think they'll lock a new game plus behind a paywall. I, if, if they do, that'll be a new low. <laughs> But yeah, I guess Yakuza 8 did do it, so we'll see. Um, but I want to see how the moon interacts with the combat and the gameplay. Because we see in one of the trailers, or maybe multiple of the trailers, that at the top of like the turn-based um, screen, sometimes the moon is there. And if people have figured out what it does... I have not been made privy to it, but I want to see how that interacts with the turn-based combat. Because, and let's see here, so, I'll just call it moon combat. Um, so, moon combat, and again, uh, just because I think it's fun to look at these things, uh, let's see. Here, what window do I want? It's one of these. Okay, I don't want to blast your ears out. Um, I want to see if it's in here or which trailer it's in. I want to say it's like here. No, it's not there. I'm gonna scrub through really quickly. I think it must be the sec, no, the Royal Tournament trailer, maybe? No moon. Let's see here. Wait, I think it might be. Ah, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Okay. So let me full screen this. So we see these things at the top, right? Um, and maybe it has something to do with the synthesis uh, screen, which, as we've talked about in the videos, um, is alluding to Hegelian dialectic, where you pose a thesis, an antithesis, um, when they are combined, they help you to discover like a new kind of truth, and that's the synthesis of the thesis and the antithesis. Cool. And that is kind of that ties in with the archetypes, I believe, because it's synthesis and the synthesis attacks are based on the archetype. So like we're looking at Hulkenberg using the knight archetype right now. But at the top of the screen, we have the moon. What's it doing there? Like, do we get a special, uh, like if we use archetypes enough, is there like a another mechanic within it that helps you gain favor with the moon? Um, like, like to become king? Like, is it like a reputation thing um, based on not only like people's, votes but also your um your achievements you know like is is what you do in combat affecting people's perspectives of you maybe there's a crowd watching you fight at this time and if you do really well in the fight and you impress them a lot then that helps you gain favor in the election and so the moon gains power and like gifts you 
a super or something. I don't know. Um, but I love when combat interacts with social systems. Like, uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth did that. I know people don't love the social systems in Rebirth, like, fully. Um, but that's more for story reasons. I really like, though, how they use their, like, um their synergy attacks and if you use synergy attacks more with certain characters in rebirth then their affinity with you goes up what if this is kind of like a system like that um where if you do really well in key fights that are very public then you the like the society's affinity towards you as a potential king will go up and it if you like hit all three of those markers then it like activates the moon or whatever, right? Why is it there? What relevance does it have in the combat system? Um, so yeah, that's, that is something that I really am hoping we get something about. If I had a nickel for every Atlas game that came out this year that had a gameplay cycle based on the moon, I'd have two nickels. <laughs> I, you know, I haven't put that together, Isa. But you're right. I, and I'm not mad about it. <laughs> I'm not mad. Sen said that uh, thinks the moon has something to do with the character's eyes turning yellow. That would be cool, cause like that would that would make sense. You know, something connecting, connecting the two. Maybe, maybe the elder tribe because he has that heterochromia, like allows him like a special connection um, between himself and the moon. That would be pretty cool. Um, So, I just, actually, now that you bring that up, something that, this is a surefire one, this might as well be a, this might as well be a free space, honestly. Um, I'm just gonna put heterochromia, zoom in. <laughs> They are, t like, I feel like in every, like, literally everything, it's just been a zoom in on the main character's eyes, which means that the heterochromia, I think, will be important, right? I'm not putting that on here. I'm not going to have two heterochromia-inspired spots on the bingo sheet. Um, but they always do, like, that, like that deep zoom in on the eyes whether it's him summoning the archetype uh or or him um just existing and they really want to show off that he has heterochromia um but they're totally going to do another massive zoom in they always do it uh and on top of that just while we're doing gimmies just while we're doing gimmies uh we're gonna see We are totally going to see some books being <laughs> destroyed. Ripped, torn, burned. Your guess is as good as mine. Maybe we'll have that be like a subspace. Um, we're going to see some books getting slaughtered in this trailer. Dismembered. Disrespected. Some books are getting get in the business in this in this upcoming to some capacity uh in in the upcoming uh event because i guess the, the government just really hates books um but yeah i feel strongly about that it is i gotta say if we get it if we get an announcement of a demo i don't like the person who i will become uh 
So I'm not putting that on here because I need some time. <laughs> if there's a demo, I will I will scream. I fully agree with you on the new party members. I think they'll get a little bit more of a highlight. Um, I I don't think we'll receive. I think we will eventually get a demo. I don't think I think it's a little bit early right now um, for a demo. Um, if we did though, yo, that would consume my life for the next month. Which isn't good, because I haven't finished all the achievements that I want to in um, uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth uh, yet. And so that will create a very much a, a tear in my soul. Uh, also, I think that they, they're they doing this showcase now. But I think that the real marketing of it will really ramp up after, after uh, uh, Vengeance. Uh, SMT Vengeance comes out, uh, which, yeah, that's coming out soon, too, um, and I think that that looks sick, uh, I didn't get SMT5, because it didn't look great to me, um, and this looks really good, so, um, it looks like it fixes all the things that I was disinterested about for, uh, SMT5, um, but I do, I'm not putting demo, I, I can't do that, I can't do it. Um, I hope you're right, but I also hope you're really wrong. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. if they gave us a demo now, oh my god, the next, assuming it does come out in, I, like I said earlier, I think it's gonna be a late October game. I think that's when it's coming out, and having to, like, play the first bit, let's say it's like a uh, even if it's like a unicorn overlord kind of demo and it's real meaty, right? It gets you a lot of information and gets you really invested in the game. Ugh. The wait till October would be brutal. Absolutely brutal. Um, but, but we'll see. Um, okay, so books being destroyed i think that's totally gonna happen in the trailer what do i specifically want though hold on let me i need to duplicate this okay what else what else what else i'm curious to as to what you all think are we going to get any information on an antagonist? Like, or, like, allude to an antagonist? We see we see the blonde dude with the knife, right? Uh, I think we might know his name. I don't care. Um, he looks like the worst. I don't think he will. I, I also think he's a red herring in the trailers. I think we'll think he's an antagonist, uh, but I don't. I think he's more likely to end up as a party member than, than like, the antagonist. Uh, just because it's too obvious, I think, uh, straight from the get-go in the trailers. So I don't think he's the antagonist. Um, so d are we going to get a hint as to who they want us to think the antagonist is? Like like some narrative meat? End of the trailer, Mr. Mysterious. What if we're the antagonist all along? And by trying to save the... Ooh, that won't happen. Totally won't happen. That would be kind of cool, though, is if it was almost like a Shadow of the Colossus-style, like, twist. Um, That would be kind of sick, actually. Uh, Like a morality system, almost, where we could be, like, a benevolent king, or we could just mess with the mess with the world um to to gain favor and we are inevitably the worst i would kind of like that i would still think i would go the good route what? yeah i think i would still go the good route in a game like this um <laughs> will they pull a hidden deity pulling the strings yeah <laughs> i mean come on now for sure um 
maybe not in the traditional sense because like typically it's like grounded games and then a fantastical deity um i wonder like i don't know i don't know that would be interesting the presentation is on on monday of this week so this upcoming monday uh at i believe it is 3 p.m pacific time 6 p.m eastern time um so that's so it will be yeah like like 3 p.m pacific 6 p.m eastern uh, which is actually a pretty solid time um for a for a showcase uh so i'm super excited i think that they because atlas west is is pushing it i do think that there will be an english dub i think a lot of it will either have subtitles or like dubbing over like the creator's voice um but i think it, yeah it'll accommodate english speakers uh i i'm not a thousand percent sure that it will be entirely dubbed um but there there will be some level of like like we'll be able to see it it won't fully be in japan in japanese um but i'm like don't quote me on that i guess uh but it, because atlas west is pushing it um it will be a like accessible to us uh who do not speak japanese um so i am gonna say in parentheses antagonist revealed or like an antagonistic force you know because we know that the church in the game is the worst because uh, the church is kind of the ones that push that the elder tribe is evil and that they use heretical magic and all of that stuff the sanctus church right um which is the un the religious like organization in the in the world of metaphor and so um we'll i think whether it's leaning into that um or they give like an actual face like a like a shido-esque figure i don't know if they'll go that far um but i do think that there will be an some level of them alluding to the antagonistic force even if it's like the church wants to kill us you know um those out of context voice lines and all that all right so antagonist revealed oh wait antagonist revealed Uh, and then I think he'll discuss, they've talked a lot about the, the themes of being heavily, uh, about like fear, right? And the, the big thing is fear in this game. Uh, you know, facing your fears in some capacity fear. And I think that that'll take a lot of different shapes, right? Um, uh, you know, like for persona 3 right loss was big uh like one of the big central themes but that looks so different to the different characters in that game uh, and so i think that it'll be we'll see fear in all shapes and sizes whether it's you know fear of the unknown you know from like evil people being prejudiced or, or racist against the other tribes because they they feel fear the the change that could come if their social standing was kind of like taken away from them you know maybe that will be delved into um you know the the fear of persecution the fear of the homos like these these 
incredibly powerful magical beings that look horrific, you know, descending upon them, right? Do you think we'll get more allusions to Tokyo in the metaphor uh, presentation? Um, yeah. I, I don't think it'll be anything big. I don't think it'll be anything big. That's actually a good one. We're putting that on here. That's a, that is a good one, uh, Lord Kresnik. Um, we're totally putting that on here. Uh, but I do think that there will be a brief, even if it's just like a flash of Tokyo Tower or like a, the cityscape that we see on like the back of the, the metaphor website. I do think that there will be some allusion to like the real world or to the utopia, right? Um, so I'm at, I'm going to put the, um, uh, allusion to Tokyo. And then I'm going to duplicate it, take another one down here. And then I'm going to add, um, do you think the mechas seen in the trailer will have a greater role in combat besides being personas? Oh, so like the like the the mecha archetype looking things. I think functionally they will be treated very similar to personas. I think that, so, uh, not everyone in this world, obviously, can summon archetypes. So, like, what is the X factor? Also, you might hear my cat in the background, and I apologize. She is not happy when I'm in a room that she's not allowed in. Um, but she would be, like, rubbing against the mic and all that. Um, but, um, so... Uh, to answer your question, I think that they'll be functionally very similar to Personas in that there will be a narrative reason um, for them to be able to unlock those archetypes. And I think that that will be inherently connected to, obviously, academia, because we see the, the, the massive statue in academia, which I'm going to switch over to the trailer just to show the statue real quick. Um, uh here and then i think it is not this trailer not this trailer this one uh this statue right so on this statue so i didn't do this i can't take credit for this i'm just sharing information that i have heard right um yeah, I saw it in the, uh, again, I keep, uh, he, great videos. If you are excited about Metaphor and haven't watched Chris Kohler's videos on it yet, go check them out. They're spectacular. Um, but he, in one of his videos, pointed out that the language on here, which is um, Esperanto, right? So the, written in Esperanto on this statue is all of the different archetypes, you know, like Seeker, uh, there's one called Soul Hacker. Um, you have, you know, the Knight, the the Warrior, the, you know, so on and so forth, right? They're all written on this statue. So inherently, um, in this academia, um, I think that it will be directly connected with our imagination, right? Uh, because the whole idea behind the world is that... Uh, people's magic has been stifled and that now uh, people need to use those tools to be able to actually use magic. And we see books being ripped, burned, all of that stuff. Um, and, you know, books and literature, that kind of is what helps spur magic on. Um, and so with this being such a wealth of knowledge and information, uh, I think that we will be opened up to imagination to be able to use that higher magic and through like academia, which I think is this world's version of the velvet room. Um, we will be able to 
like unshackle ourselves um, from the constraints of like the magic system in like the standard world. And so narratively, I think it'll be important, but functionally, once you awaken your archetype, outside of it being used as like a, um, I think it, it would be more similar to the, um, the Ouroboros in Xenoblade Chronicles 3, how it's a very important power for them to progress the story, um, but once you understand what it is, like, there might be twists and turns along the way to kind of, like, recontextualize what you believe um, an archetype to be, but I think overall, um, once you learn and once everyone awakens to their archetypes, um, it'll be kind of more of a, you are collecting archetypes through the social links, and that's where they'll have the most relevance. Uh, because I know the social link with the Marie, Maria, the little girl with the, the wings, right? Um, that's in the trailers. Uh, you get the, let me see if I can find her. Yeah, this little girl. Oh. <laughs> um, not who I meant. Uh, this little girl. I'm pretty sure um, you get the healer archetype from her. And... And so I think that's where the most, um, like, context will get for it, like, in the narrative is going to be from. Um, let's see here. Let's go back over here. Oh, is the mic out of sync a little bit? Hmm. That's unfortunate. Um, let's see here. Um, and yeah, I think Samurai is one of them too. And so... I think that we're, we're gonna do is we're going to Illusion to Tokyo. Uh, for this one, we are going to get this squared away. Um, I'm gonna, because we were talking about archetypes, I do think that they will like highlight different archetypes and just like show off like the archi what the archetypes look like. Show more archetype appearances. Uh, and then let me see if I can fix the, the mic really quickly. Okay. Give me one second. I'm going to mute really fast. And I'm going to... In the meantime, enjoy this Ishgard theme uh, from Final Fantasy XIV.
Oh, no, it's still a little bit out of sync. But that is yeah, that is totally fine. Also, hola Vicente, uh, nice to see you. Um, and then summon summoner class that just turns you into a persona character. That is hilarious. Um, and so. If it's all right, just to, just to keep things cruising, um, I don't want to have to like fully like quit out stream just to like fix the the mic input. Um, I'll turn Ishgard back down. Have it be ambient. Uh, but yeah, what are you all thinking as we as we are thinking through this list? What are you thinking? Like, what is something that you want to see? Or you think that we really will see? Oh, I never actually included, um, allude, or I say allude a lot, um, reference beer theme is one of the things that we were talking about. So reference beer theme. Perfect. Cool. Alan Wake 2 DLC. I would love to try out Alan Wake. I feel it's like horror adjacent, right? I, I feel like that might, I don't know. I get very in my head about horror stuff. Um, but I hear nothing but good things about Alan Wake. But, okay. But, okay. Let's see here. We can... So we're getting pretty close to having this filled up. Oh, the weather system! Yes! Yes! Weather... Uh, that... We're gonna stick on that. But that uh, that does remind me of another kind of uh, thing I want to talk about. Um, let's see. So I am going to add weather system explanation. Cool. The weather system is going to be something I... I'm so, like, unironically, like, you mentioning that, that is something I'm unironically excited to see how they actually address in, like, will weather, like, will there be extreme weather conditions? Will there, like, and I have to imagine because it is on a calendar system that that will change as time goes on. And because we're traveling the world, like, the whole nation, different places will be affected differently. Um... And so, like, I think on the map, we see, like, a very autumnal kind of area. Uh, is it autumn all year round? I can't imagine that it would be. So does that mean that the the map also changes with the seasons? And how does that affect the Gauntlet Runner's travel? Are there going to be days where there's flooding and it just can't get past a river, right? So cool. And maybe that's just, like, maybe it's predetermined events like uh, this it's the their world's version of like april so it's the rainy season right so no the weather system is going to be really cool and just in general learning more about the gauntlet runners like are all gauntlet runners made the same i can't imagine that they are um like Is our gauntlet runner like particularly good for some reason? Are we are we using the 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 bottom of the barrel kind of gauntlet runner, right? Where where is that kind of standing? So that is something that I'm st stoked to know more about. 
um, so the weather system and the gauntlet runner. Uh, because since the gauntlet runner is going to be our primary mode of travel, this is how we're getting around the world. It's not like in Persona where you just hop on the train and you go down to like, like the scramble crossing or whatever, right? You can't just run on over um, to grab some medicine um, or, you know, in the, or go, head on over to Akihabara at night. So that's going to be cool is how the gauntlet runner actually operates and the weather system. And just in general, what's it called in the game? Um, it is the uh, the social system. It has a specific name in the game. Uh, let's see here. I won't find it in this trailer. Uh, you get specific. Ah, yes, 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 yes. Oh, my name's right in front of it. Or my face is right in front of it. It is the. Actually, let's fix this. The Royal Virtues. I'm excited to play around with the Royal Virtues in the game. So you can see it in the bottom right corner, right here, uh, in the video, um, right right behind the the YouTube play bar. Um, the the royal virtues i'm i want to know like obviously they're important these are your social stats in the game i want to see how the social systems work is it going to be just like persona and like the perks are really only for like social links um in the game or creating bonds um or is it going to be something are there going to be implications in the gameplay that if you prioritize imagination over uh you know one of the other ones uh, i think one is like leadership like how what effects that's gonna have so i want to know more about the royal virtues also on here just to like highlight the the weather they have temperature for that like is that just flavor is that obviously like if it's colder it'll be more likely a snow or like be hot or something is there going to be like status effects if you go into a desert where you like have like debuffs because you are burning hot and like Maybe there will be, like, tribal attributes that, like, some people are better in warm weather versus cold weather. Uh, like, I don't know. That's cool to me. Um, also, because fashion is such a staple in the game, we've seen everyone in their default outfits. I wonder, I'm, I wonder if there is going to be kind of, like, a fashion element to, um, to the game. So... Moving back over here. I think that one is a little bit pie in the sky. Having a fashion element, have your, make it be like dress spheres in Final Fantasy X-2, um, which I've never played. But I hear that it's actually a really robust job system in X-2. this so you know what i'm gonna add it why not why not i think they're they are going to reveal the fashion system in the game i'm gonna pop that down there because because there are different temperatures 
they really highlighted in like w some of the first like creators voices and announcements that like the fashion of this world is important and very like 70s inspired and so because that is something that they've already kind of highlighted i don't think that we can discount that maybe there is going to be a clothing system in the game where you can alter how the different characters dress and that has some impact on their stats. So, I'm I'm shooting my shot with that one. I'm shooting my shot with that one. Um, and then, uh, let's let's say you know the the royal virtues. Royal virtues. Virtues. Royal Virtues info. Cool. All right. We only have one, two, three, four, five, six, six left. So let's duplicate this. And I feel like we have a pretty solid solid list going for us right now um so do you do any of you have any like um uh, like pie in the sky kinds of hopes that you want even if you don't necessarily think we'll get in the showcase any pie in the sky hopes that like if you did see it in the showcase it would blow your mind, right? Something that you just really, really want to see. Um, also, I'm looking back at chat. Don't know how I missed it, but Ark, if there was a Devil Summoner class that lets you summon Jack Frost, peak, peak, 10 out of 10 game, game of the year. Immediately, immediately. Yeah, DGC, I, I think the costumes from the other games, having an actual status, like, an effect on your stats, I think that that would be really cool. Because they have costumes anyways. Like, it's not like it's a new thing to change your wardrobe in the game. Um, and, you know, in, like, Persona, th not in Reload, obviously, because it's much more cosmetic in Reload, but, like, in Original 3... Like, there would be altered costumes that would tangibly affect your stats. Like, the, the summer gear, the winter gear, the gear that's distasteful. You, you know <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so, I think it would work really well. Um, especially if they're already implementing, like, a weather system. So, your summer gear would help you in hotter climates. Your winter gear in colder climates or during the colder months. Um, and you have to adjust what you're wearing based on that. And, like, maybe there could, well, I don't, I do not think that this is going to be the case with that, but, like, almost like a Final Fantasy fourteen or, like, even a Persona 3 Reload-esque glam system, where if you don't like how something looks, you just equip what you need to, and then just make your character look how you want. Maybe that's, like, a new game plus perk or something. I don't know. That would be sick, though. Um... But yeah, it's not something new. And it's not even something new to this team, right? So it might just be an expansion on that already kind of existing system that they've used. So my kind of, for this showcase, my kind of like pie in the sky never gonna happen not it's just just not gonna happen and i and i'm okay with that i am genuinely okay with that um is i truly would be flabbergasted but kind of excited um to see actually i'm gonna put a pin in that because i realized i never added 
a glimpse of Tokyo on here. Let's see. So let's see. Pop it here. Just a, just the slightest glimpse of Tokyo. Actually, actually, I'm gonna say real world. I'm gonna hedge my bets with this one. Even though it's always been Tokyo up to this point, I'm gonna just say glimpse of real world. And we're gonna put, you know, parentheses around this and that. Cool, glimpse of real world. Now, <laughs> now my kind of, uh, oop. Um, now my pie in the sky, right? I had this written down on a on a on a Google Doc, um, so let me pull that up really quickly, uh, just so that I can frame it properly. So let me do this, and because I had I yesterday. I had some time in between work and then I had to go back to work for, for an event. Um, I really think that there will be, no, I don't think this. I would be floored. I would be floored. I would be so excited if there was a direct confirmation during this showcase and a direct reference to Hegelian dialectic. I've talked about it in most of, not all of them, but most of my metaphor videos. Um, and they have talked about that on the, um, the Atlas Stalker Club. Um, th those videos on the Atlas Tube channel. Um, but so like, it's not like, it's never been referenced before. But if Hashino talked about it, right? Chef's kiss. Absolutely chef's kiss. Um, so I'm gonna say Hegelian dio if I could spell lectic reference perfect so Hegelian dialectic reference boom let's pop that right there who knows it's not impossible it is, it is absolutely not impossible. It's probably not going to happen, but it could. It could. Uh, so it, it's going on there. Let's see. Ooh, Pi is see other candidates form their own parties. That's pretty. Arc, that's pretty good. I do want to know who our rivals are gonna be, um, because it's we'll totally have like a very specific rival, um, like like or rivals throughout this that we'll be running into and like competing against throughout the throughout the course of this royal tournament and so seeing what their parties look like oh english voice actor reveal too those are both really good let i'm adding both i'm adding both to this english va reveal because i think that th i think that both of those would be really uh, i think the english voice actor reveal is actually very possible 
uh, especially if we do get like a new dubbed trailer um, and then um, yeah the other candidates I don't know if it will happen in this but I would love it too that would be really really cool to see like just just a profile on like because we saw like the snippets of like the the yellow yugif tribe or the 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 fun like a a a peripus tribe guy um i i also think that the peripus tribe guy even though he looks really fun and chill i think he's gonna be the worst i think he's gonna be the most dislikable character in this game because he's gonna be very charismatic but like behind the scenes he's gonna be just an abomination of a person that is my guess like they're fun loving but like cutthroat um i don't know maybe that's wrong maybe he's gonna be the best maybe i'll end up loving him but i don't know i don't know i think he might be cut through just just my take um because look at hold on just look at this guy just uh royal tournament let's Oh, he's gonna be the worst. He, this man is going to be just evil. Um, really, he gives me like worm tongue vibes. Um, this guy. Oh, oh. they're gonna be delightful. Um, This guy. This guy. He might be a delight. I hope he is. I really hope he is. I think he's going to be the worst. I think he's going to... <laughs> I think he's going to be cutthroat. Um, Because he just... I don't know. It, it just feels... Is he... Wait. Does he have heterochromia? Hold on. It might just be... Hold on. Hold on. Wait. Playback speed. I'm going to do 0.25. I'm going to mute it so it's not terrible to listen to. Okay. He has like blue eyes. Okay. It might just be the resolution is terrible for some reason. So let's bump that up. Okay, no, it was just the resolution. I thought, I thought he had one red eye and one pink eye, um, but it was just the the resolution was really bad. Okay, either way, this guy is gonna be the worst. Mark my words. Mark my words. That's not going on the bingo card. That's just a me thing. That's just a me thing. Yeah. Yeah, look at the note. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, and then it, have it released on PS5, Xbox, and PC. Um, I think, have they not already announced? I think it's revealed for PS5, is it not? Maybe I'm wrong. And maybe I just kind of assumed... Um, I know all of the trailers have been through Xbox, but that's because Atlas has that weird agreement with Microsoft that I don't understand. Um, but yeah, I, I guess if it's not already revealed, I would have to imagine that a multi-platform reveal would be like coming. I guess, yeah, I guess I just kind of assumed that it was, um, <laughs> if it's not, I'm buying an Xbox. Don't listen to me, Microsoft. That I I don't hold me to that. Um, okay, it has been revealed. Okay, <laughs> I was like, I just bought PS Five. Um, I don't want it. I don't, and I don't really want an Xbox. Well, I I might still get. Well, unless it depends on whether or not Fable is on PC, because Fable is like what I love Fable. Anyways, we're fully digressing.
Um, okay, so we have one spot left. We have one spot left. It's a big spot. It's a big spot. Actually, because could pretty easy, depending on what goes here, this could be a pretty easy bingo up top here. Um, or it could, I, I think that the bingo going like down the center, I think that that's gone. You know, unless the fashion system is revealed, I think that's gone. So what do we put in the last spot? I think that we have some options here. I do think that we have some options. Um, we could see, I'm of two minds and I'm curious as to your opinions. I'm curious as to your opinions. So we could put, you know, something like how the magla system works, you know, like the magic system in the, in the world, you know, like how the tools work and how other people engage with that outside of like our party. Or we could do something like the different settlements outside of, because really we've only seen like very small snippets of towns outside of Grand Trad itself. Um, which, like, which I believe is the name of the capital city. Uh, don't quote me on that. Um, but other than that, a more in-depth look at academia, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what to put in this last one. I'm kind of stuck. Because we have options. Um, or like... Is there something with music that we should put that I don't think we're going to get anything crazy with like music or like a, like we're not going to get a soundtrack, obviously. Um, so I don't think that there will be anything like overly music inspired. We'll probably get more concept art. Um, maybe a new vehicle that we haven't seen yet. That's kind of covered in like the Gauntlet Runner info though. I don't know. I don't know. I I think well I'll give you guys a second um, because going through I'm going I want to make sure that we don't have any repeats or anything like this so combat updates yeah 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 weather system moon com <laughs> moon combat um let's say I'm gonna revise this just so that I because I'll totally forget what I meant by this. Moon combat effects. Okay, cool. Books being destroyed, English voice actor reveal, new homeless designs. Ooh, battle theme. That would be sick. Battle theme. I, I, I like the, the battle theme. Like, mm, I don't know that the music we've heard up to this point is the main theme of the game. So maybe we will get like a like a main theme confirmation because if we hear the same music that we heard in the um in the um Royal Tournament trailer, then that's probably the main theme. So what if we do take that? Because we have nothing about music. We have a lot about gameplay. We have stuff about, <clears throat> like, the voice actors, stuff like that. We don't have anything about concept art or music. So I'm, I think I'm going to take your idea of the battle theme, DGC, because I think that's a good call. Um, and I'm going to... co-opt it. main theme reveal uh, uh, main because like main theme could also be like 
fear like thematically um main ost theme reveal okay there we go that is and i i even think i oh wait i have english voice actor reveal on here twice anticlimactic anticlimactic because we do still have one more uh and this i think since we put the the main theme there i'm gonna say uh, reveal of new settlement uh reveal new Oh, he does. Um, a female protagonist would be cool. I, I'm not gonna. I, I don't think it's gonna happen. Um, I think that that dream died with Persona Three Reload. Persona Six, maybe. Uh, I could kind of see that because I think that they've seen a fair. Uh, if they built a game from the ground up with a female protagonist plan. So that it could be easier, easier um, to like have that within scope of the project straight from the get go. Maybe I don't have any hope that we'll get. It. If we were gonna get a female protagonist, I think it we would have found out by now, and that the male protagonist wouldn't be on like everything. Um, cause I do think that that would be a major selling point of the game straight from the get go. Hopefully I'm wrong. Hopefully I'm wrong. Um, I, I don't, that, that, if we did get that though, I would be over the, over the, the, the voting electoral moon, so to speak. Um, Yes, I really want to see the magic tools in, in, in the magic system, like the Maglos, explain. Um, I don't think we're going to get too deep into that, though, in this one. Um, and honestly, if we even get a third of what's on this list, I'll be stoked. <laughs> uh, I will be stoked. Um, but, yeah, I think I think that's a solid list for right now. Uh, and so, with that being said, um, please, 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 um, fill out your own bingo form. Whether it's the same as mine, whether you just take the ones on mine and re-tweak it. I used Canva to, to write this down and everything, um, and get it all kind of squared away, um, but you can use whatever you you know use your phone use your you know whatever works best for you um but it's on twitter uh share it with me on twitter follow me on twitter if you don't already um because i really want to see everything tag me tag me tag me um and even um make sure to um join to like join the thought bubble discord server um and join me on stream on the 22nd Join me on stream so that we can react to the showcase together on the 22nd uh, because I am so excited. I hope you are all excited um, and we can go after the stream is over. We can go through the bingo cards together. What was confirmed, what wasn't confirmed. I want to hear how many bingos you all got. Um, and yeah, I guess we'll kind of go from there. Um, oh, you don't use it. Well, then. Uh, but uh, you are on the Discord, the Thought Bubble Discord server, uh, I believe, correct? Um, unless you left. Um, so, uh, so definitely post them in there too. There's an entire Atlas chat. Um, fill it with metaphor, um, and we'll kind of go from there. But as always, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day, a fantastic rest of your week, and why not even a fantastic rest of your month that is a wrap on this metaphor discussion but there are going to be a lot more live streams uh in the future um one uh it, it was voted on by 
folks on on YouTube. Um, but the next game that I'm going to actually be live streaming is sitting right here next to me on the desk. It is going to be uh, this delightful um, this delightful game right here. The Neo World Ends With You. Um, will you be saving the, the stream slash post for discussion? Um, oh, yes. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, the stream will be up on the channel. Like the, um, like the VOD will be up. Uh, it should be under like live streams on the YouTube channel. And then depending, I'll probably like edit it down into like a more digestible form you know after after the fact that may or may not happen i have a couple videos in the works right now um but at the very least the vod will be on the channel after the stream so that if anyone wants to comment you know chat continue the conversation going even if you can't make it um then please do um but but now as always i really appreciate you all come and hang out it's a shorter stream um, but I just really wanted to get all of the thoughts out before this this Atlas showcase. Um, but have a great rest of your day. Um, I, I so I did start streaming on Twitch uh, for a little bit, um, but for for this metaphor stuff, I'm gonna try and like uh, figure out how to broadcast to both. But for the metaphor stuff, I think I figured YouTube would be a lot more discoverable um, uh, for the metaphor because, you know, I do the metaphor videos and all of that. Um, and that's where the live stream is going to be. So for the metaphor stuff, until I can get streaming working on both like YouTube, like simulcasting to YouTube and Twitch, um, I'm probably going to do this, this stuff here for right now. Um, but thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate that. Uh, and yeah, I wish Square had done more because I love the original World Ends With You. It, one of my favorite DS games of all time. I love the characters, love the plot, love the cast. Um, anime. It exists. It sure does exist, and it is pretty, um, but not the best thing I've ever seen in my life. Um, you know what? I'm sorry. I'm digressing. I keep trying to say goodbye, but then something – the near Automata or Automata anime, so good, so stunningly good. I If you, have, if you are interested in near – and you haven't played the games, or maybe you don't have the like time to play the games. Check out the near Automata anime because it is it hits all of the beats from the games so perfectly well. Um, I was worried when I saw that it was A one doing it. I pretty I'm pretty sure it's A one doing that did it. But they they knocked it out of the park. Um, but yeah, near. Also, I'm watching the Fallout show right now, which I, so, actually, sorry, the show in Pell time right now. If you like Fallout, which I'm not a Fallout person, I've never really played Fallout, right? Um, I've never, I've played two, two hours of Fallout 4, wasn't my thing, didn't play it. Um, like, a month or so before the show came out, me and my buddies, my buddy really likes tabletop RPGs, there's a fallout tabletop rpg and it is so much fun it is so much fun so if you like tabletop rpgs and you want to try something outside of the realms of D, &D check genuinely check out the fallout one especially if you're interested in that world so good so good something that i've been playing around with um uh, we're just chatting now um Something I've been playing around with is <clears throat> I'm learning how to dungeon master right now, just because I want to understand, you know, the more inner nuances of uh, of D and D. Um, but 
I want to see if I can figure out, which I may never, this, this may never happen. I want to see if I can figure out once metaphor comes out, how to create a homebrew version of metaphor so that there can be like more metaphor D and D campaigns so that instead of being like a halfling, you could be a member of the Yugif tribe and like maybe their perks are similar to a halfling, you know, whatever. Um, Cause I feel like the world of metaphor is going to be so much fun to explore but because it is like a, a, a tangible narrative, um, you don't have as much freedom as you would if you like did like a tabletop RPG. And so I don't know if I could figure out how to do a homebrew, which I'm still relatively new to like becoming a dungeon master and like learning the inner nuances of tabletop RPGs. But I'm getting into them a lot more. That's something that I would really want to do because I think that that could be really, really cool. And if I can figure out, and again, there are no promises on this. This, these are another pie in the sky, right? Um, I'd want to make a video on that process of like how it was made, like the tabletop RPG. And I wouldn't sell it or anything. If anything, it would turn into like a PDF and people could have it. Um, I don't know. May never happen. But that's something that I think is really cool because metaphor. I can't remember the last time I've been this excited about a a game and i get very excited about games all the time you know rebirth uh reload tears of the kingdom uh even like pokemon releases i take i take too much pto for video game releases i fear um but it's pto it's fine it's fine um i i have a life i promise um <laughs> Uh, oh, I should, that is, that is, uh, that is genius, Noah, uh, um, I should ask Eli, I might, yeah, so, once metaphor comes out, Eli, for those who aren't familiar, um, is one of the spectacular, 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 mods on the on the discord server the thought bubble discord server um no that that's a really that's a really good idea i should i should definitely ask him about that um but yeah so that's kind of where we're at i am probably i actually have to go into work later today uh to volunteer for an event volunteer um they they'll make me but i like i don't know they might as well. Um, so it, it is voluntary, but also it's work. I'm salaried, so it's not like hours help. Um, but I do get like comp time to like take days, like a, like a half day later uh, later in the month, which is awesome. Um, either way, I'm probably going to go uh, play some more Final Fantasy VII Rebirth as I try to complete everything uh, for the the in-game achievement system uh, for the hotel, if you're familiar with that, um, because I am very close. I have 85 out of 88 trophies, uh, and then I don't know. I'm going to go to work, and then I will see you all on Monday. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day, a fantastic rest of your week, and why not even a fantastic rest of your month? Uh, and hopefully streams will be a little bit more frequent and especially with metaphor news, if there's ever anything metaphor happening, we're, we'll, we'll chat, we'll have a conversation about it, but have a great one later.